There was a record-breaking number of Asian celebrities that walked their way down the red carpet at the Met Gala this year, and we are going to tell you why it was kind of important that they did. Or not, depending on how you view the development of Asians in America. The Met Gala is an elite institution. It is a very big deal to get an invitation in a way, yeah. um, you know, it used to be reserved for New York's elite, sort of like the Bruce Waynes of Gotham City, Jacqueline Onassis used to go. Then of course it started shifting over to be more like celebrities and arts and fashion over the year. But, but is it significant that a record yeah. number of Asians from America, from Asia, from Europe, got invited to the gala this yeah, year? Yeah, because they kind of have to be validated by a certain group of people. We are talking about the elites. Like Anna Wintour has to know your name. Anna Wintour knows who Simu Liu is and Michelle Yeoh and Stephanie Su. She knows these people by name. But of course, us, you guys, uh, you know we uh, have our mind in the industry, but we also are very, very much in tune with what your average Asian American just trying to have a good life in America is into. And uh, I do think your average Asian American, Andrew, probably has no idea what the Met Gala is. No. I don't think they really care and you maybe don't need to care but it's essentially like the New York's version of the Oscars except it's for fashion anyways guys we're gonna go through the list of the Asians that showed up at the Met Gala that got invited some of them are familiar and some of them are not so familiar but they're all bona fide stars in their own way so we'll talk about Asian representation uh, please hit that like button check out other episodes of the hot pop boys David who's the number one person that we got to talk about we've talked about it before who is it? We got to lead off with the new queen of the Chinese English speaking world or Asian English speaking world, Michelle Yeoh. Born in Malaysia, got rich in Hong Kong and China, and at 60 years old, re-emerged as an Oscar winner in America. Yes, you know, I, I know that many people are arguing about my origin, whether I am from Hong Kong or from Malaysia, but either way, as long as you call me the queen. You know what's funny? Like, I know that she hasn't got that official title, but I can't personally, I personally cannot think of another, like, older woman that is, like, so revered in the Asian celebrity world right now. Right. I, like, I, I'm sure there's some in Japan and Korea that, like, I don't know, but and even of China, but globally... She's kind of the it one. She's, she's it. I would say so. Um, she is, wore a gown inspired by Karl Lagerfeld, and that was the whole theme of the event, Andrew. It was a gown tuxedo, but I felt like there was still some ancient Chinese traits to the way the silhouette was cut. So uh, I thought that was cool. cool. But I, anyway. I, like it when, I like it whenever they do that. You know, they, they can tie in culture into the more Western gown. I mean, I think my cultural hot take on Michelle Yeoh is it's really cool to see Asian celebrities come over at 60 and they've been rich and famous and they've gone through these roller coasters in the East, but it's like they get on an upswing playing like mom or grandma characters in America, which is like Michelle Yeoh's story now. And I think that's pretty interesting. I do think it's tough to say that, you know, she really represents like people who struggled because I think she came from quite an illustrious family and had a great, you know, career. You know what I mean? But like... She I still think it's good. She definitely doesn't like represent like the regular common person. But I will say this: at least you know all you Asians out there who are in the industry and can't make it for a couple decades. Who knows when you're 50 or 60, they might call you back. <laughs> well, you just have to be super successful in Asia first. Do you think it's weird though? Like, do you think any Asian American kids watching media right now are like, why are we looking up to like? Rich Brian and Michelle Yo, they're from like Malaysia and Indonesia. Is that the best Asian rapper and best I, Asian actor? I'll be honest. I think the Asian American identity pretty much is just Asians who speak English. Right, at a like, like eight or nine out of ten. Yeah, like eight. it could even be with an accent. Like it doesn't matter. As long as you're Asian and you speak you English. You do not have to be an American passport holder. Dude, as long as you're Asian and you speak English, you can represent and still help Asian Americans because it's true that a lot of Asians still living in America speak English with an accent, to be honest. Right, so, statistically speaking, yeah, that is so true. so like she represents our parents or our aunties or whatever. Moving on to number two, Andrew, Ki Hui Kwan. Incredible comeback story. Shut out of the game for 35 years. He was a refugee from Vietnam. He moved to the 626, graduated from Alhambra High School. He became dad in the Goonies, short round in Indiana Jones. And then now he won a Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. Yo, his suit, the Karl Lagerfeld like uh, uh, homage, that was pretty cool. I honestly thought he was dressed like an assassin. Yeah. <laughs> and then I realized point. that's how Karl Lagerfeld used to dress. Yeah, he was a fashion assassin. You know, I only remember Karl Lagerfeld really from that one line. Uh, from J.R. J. Ryder, right? Yeah. J.R. Rennell's as hard as that's hell it. with a gun that will hit you from far as hell. Something Karl Lagerfeld. <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> Shout yeah. out to Dipset. Yeah, I really, we really remember that line. Yeah. Um, 
I think that he also took some uh, stuff from In the Mood for Love because he actually had that scene in Everything Everywhere all at once where he was, you know, very uh, classical, That's wearing true. those exact same glasses. That's true. That's um, true. Andrew, what is your hot take? Because, like, for us, I think I I've been hearing a lot of stuff from a lot of people in Hollywood. They're so proud of Ki Hui Kwan. He's very pro-Asian. You know what I mean? He's got a mixed Asian story. He's Chinese, Vietnamese. But... Are some people are like, do you wish that Ki Hui Kwan would have called out the industry for shutting him out for 35 years? Or is it just good that he's so grateful that they finally gave him this great award after 35 years? Um, you know, I like like in Michelle Yeoh's case, I don't personally connect with them that closely. But I like to hear the story. I'm happy for them. I think it's good. Obviously, we grew up watching Michelle Yeoh. I remember Ki Hui Kwan from watching the movies when I was younger that were already old because he's a lot older than me, obviously. But personally, like, yeah, he's he's kind of he's he's super grateful for the industry, even though the industry shut him out. So it's kind of weird. But either way, I guess overall, I take it. It's great. It's no, a good story. I'm happy for Key. Um, moving on to number three, Andrew Stephanie Sue. Stephanie Sue played the daughter and everything, everywhere, all at once. Um, apparently, she was actually in uh some other stuff too that obviously I hadn't seen prior. But that was her big breakout role. I think the thing that really strikes me about her is like she's very like Williamsburg, Brooklyn, very Silver Lake. Yeah, yeah, I would say. Of the Asian stars, I guess, uh, I don't want to say I was surprised that she was here, but because she was a supporting actress in Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. You know, even though Ki Hui was the main male lead, and then she was the second. She got but, a nomination. But she, she is though, kind right? of like in that hipster world, and she's artsy, even though that's her biggest movie yet, but she is in some upcoming projects that are also pretty big. So um, I yeah. liked her look a lot, man. She went with a Valentino tuxedo-inspired 1970s dress, but with a tie mm. and a dress and the Janelle Monet like haircut and um I thought she did a good job because she's obviously trying to represent her identity. Yeah, and I do like how the Asians who came to the Met Gala, you know, they try to fit into the theme. They try to do something like really cool and edgy as you are supposed to when you go to the Met Gala, right? You want to stand out and let people know like, yo, I'm here, I made it. And I think everybody was looking at everybody's like unique twist on the Carl's Lagersfeld theme, right? I mean, my hot take is generally like, man, it's really dope to see an Asian American make it that does feel like somebody I know. Uh, it's not necessarily somebody from the city I grew up in because I think, you know, from a nicer city for sure than the one we grew up in. Uh, but like Bellevue or something, Bellevue, Washington could totally produce mm -hmm. like a Stephanie Sue. And I, I still went to church with people like this and it's pretty cool to see them get big. Jenny from Blackpink, Andrew. Um, Jenny is the most popular member of the K-pop group Blackpink after Lisa. And uh, she actually spent five years in New Zealand. She could speak English. Um, but a lot of people describe her as sort of like westernized, but still shy. So, I, yeah. Did, did you know who Jenny from Blackpink was? I, I knew of her. I didn't know her backstory. I didn't know she is from New Zealand. Yeah, she um, speaks English pretty fluently. I think that's cool. I mean, she does kind of remind, like, I think, I, you know, because I know that they used to sometimes make K-pop stars out of, like, Korean Americans. And American, like Asian Americans. Uh, but I think it's cool that the stars now are a little bit more westernized or American. They're not necessarily specifically American, but New Zealand is like, you know, Western world as like a British, you know, colony originally. So I guess like. Uh, no, are you surprised that more and more of the younger Asian stars are super fluent in English? Yeah, but I think a lot of them have influences and a lot of them spent time in at least Australia, Britain, New Zealand, or America. Right. right? It's or true. Canada. 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 Um, her outfit was Carl Lagersfeld inspired, but almost more of like an Aubrey Hepburn type vibe. It was from Chanel, has the Coco Chanel vibe to it. I don't know much about fashion. I just made that up literally. So I just said it looks like Austin Powers to me. I mean, honestly, I had no idea really who she was. I had seen her photo everywhere. But uh, I'm a fan. I watched a bunch of her interviews in preparation no, for this video. No, I had friends, uh, some of our friends who went to Coachella... They went crazy when Jenny and the Blackpink, they headlined Coachella. So yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, shout out to Lisa, too. Um, number five, Andrew, Simu Liu. Simu Liu Woo! is probably the biggest Asian-American male representation we have in Hollywood right now. He's a friend of ours. We hoop from time to time. I'm rooting for him 100%. Mm -hmm. um, he had a Donatella Versace personally designed Carl Lagersfeld joint, which was super flashy because on his, what, is this the lapel or his chest part? It had that, like, Just a suit ribbon dress. ice cream cake thing that Italians eat, you know? Like the ribbony, uh, the the cake, the, the ice cream cake with the ribbon top. I believe they call those, I don't know, ruffles, layers. I don't know. It was cool. I th I liked how his suit looked different because it had a different pattern on it. So you know that was already standing out. So. No, no, it's dope that he stood out. But I'm not gonna lie, that's not the suit. 
that's the best looking to me. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, overall, I think Simu was out there to stand out, uh, to be a good representation. And uh, yeah, I mean, overall, I talk about, I mean, it is true. I guess on the internet, some people, as much as Simu says great things and people love him, People try to, like, bring him down. Yeah, but but it's, like, it, weird because he hasn't really done anything that big. But so, it, apparently some people don't like his, like, per, online no, persona. No, I, like, I think it's just because he speaks on a lot of stuff. And he, and he like, as engaging as he is, as engaging as, as you are, there's going to be some people who don't like you. And just, like, us, like, the, if we were to engage more with people, maybe, I don't know, there'd be more people who liked it. And then some more people who didn't like it. I will say this. I think he challenges the idea that an Asian star is just trying to stay neutral, make as much money as they can, and not polarize anybody. Right. Because he's not shy to share his opinions on issues that are potentially divisive or polarizing. I will say this. He does not care if someone says, oh, Simu, you suck. Like, he'll, he'll like... He'll, he'll run with, and, like, And I'm going. saying, in a way, like, the most Asian-American, to me, stereotypical thing is somebody who's, like, so worried about their career and just trying to make as much money that they almost never even show who they are. To me, uh, that would be super Asian and that's stereotypical. A good point. That's a good um, point. Moving on to number six, Andrew, we got Jackson Wang. He's probably the only Chinese pop star who is cross, crossing over to the West a little bit, but especially with Asian-American audiences. You know, I was just got to think about it. Between Ki Hui, Simu, and Jackson... Pretty good representation for Asian males and Asian women, of course, too. But I, I'm just obviously focused on the Asian male because we usually get shafted the most. So, uh, yeah, I would say between all these guys, I'm pretty proud of them, man. They're all cool dudes, chill dudes. Um, I've been able to interact with with all of them on some low. Even Jackson, I exchanged some messages with him. Uh, he seems really chill. He he did Coachella this year, too. Wow. And, and uh, he was, used to be an athlete, right? He said he hoops, Yeah, too. he hoops, he hoops a little bit, or at least he used to. And he's... Cool dude. So yeah, I mean, I'd say he had on the Michael Jackson blacked out Matrix Carl Lagerfeld fusion yeah. joint on. Yeah, I mean, he pulls off stuff, you know. That uh, maybe I would, I would have trouble pulling yeah. off. No, but, I uh, mean, I'm a fan of Jackson stuff. I would say, you know, his music videos and maybe sonically the music, it's not for me. No, it's not for you. It's Daniel. not for me. It is not for but you. It, I can see the artistry it's and he's pushing the envelope and the boundaries. David, in it. hey, guess what? It's not for you. <laughs> Moving on to number seven. Uh, Eileen Gu, Eileen Gu, Gu, who won a gold medal, Andrew, interestingly enough, for China, caused a huge controversy. So are we calling her Asian American or are we calling her Chinese and just leave it at that? Well, here's the thing. When she won the gold medal, she came back to America, called herself a Chinese American or Asian American. And then some fans in China got mad because they thought that she had taken on Chinese citizenship. But she didn't. No. No. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. There, a lot of countries are given temporary citizenship nowadays, six months, one year. Uh, yeah, you know, Eileen, you can be a citizen of China for the next four months. <laughs> <laughs> um, she had a very Asian-American uh, or Asian-inspired dress on from a Hong Kong designer named Robert Wun. Um, what is your hot take on this, man? Because this is this one gets real, actually, like, geopolitical. I, I'm pretty I sure mean, presidents listen, know listen. who Eileen Gu is. I think, to be honest, the average person does not really care about who wins the gold medal for skiing. Like, to be honest, like, just the average person, right? But Eileen, to me, is almost more of, like, an icon and model at this point, you know? Because yeah. she's, she's very good looking, and uh, but she is also talented, and obviously she still won the gold, like, you know, what do you think about this argument over, like, are you loyal to America? And then people are like, I thought you said you're Chinese. It seems like all your friends are white. I mean, dude, I don't know, man. I think being a superstar hop is, is complicated. I'm I, sure I you're mean, just trying to do your thing and not even think about any of this because you're worried about your lane. Listen, but like, I do think that it's legitimate, I guess, as cultural analysis, you know, analyzers for us to analyze the fray because we're not, I'm not uh, Eileen Gu living her life. All right, I'll, I'll watch this, watch this, watch this. This is the credit I give him. Who knows that maybe in 15 years from now, we realize that what Eileen Gu did in bridging Chinese and Chinese America and Hapas was actually fairly significant. It could be. Right, right. No, we don't, give know, credit. How, we don't like, know how the dominoes and the butterflies. You don't know everywhere. because it's just the first. It's kind of jumbled and yeah. it's kind of weird. And yeah, anyways. I, I'll say this, man. I think a lot of Hapas, let me say this. Uh, most Hapas are generally not going to be freedom fighters and revolutionaries for like Asian causes like Muhammad Ali. You know, they're not going to be that style. They're going to yeah, be more like Jesse Williams or Doja Cat. For their causes, you know what I mean? Because they're kind of like in between, yeah. Hey, man, who hey, knows? There ain't nothing wrong with that. Hey, man, live your life. Number eight, Andrew, Song Hai Ko. She is uh, one of the top K-drama actresses 
in Korea. Shout out to her, man. I'm I definitely gonna, recognize her face. Yeah, I recognize her face. I'm not familiar really with her work, but I think it's really cool that she got to meet up with Jenny from Blackpink there. So that's kind of like this like buddy, but like look like Korea in the house. Korea number one. Yeah, and she did the Fendi thing. She didn't do the Karl Lagersfeld thing. And interestingly enough, Andrew, we got to bring up this point that I researched. Obviously, I did not necessarily know this. K-pop fans were mad that her and Jenny's dresses weren't as spectacular as they could have been because they kept it pretty clean, mm. simple. Of course, still a super expensive designer, but they were like very like, uh, kept it simple because well, the K-pop fans were like no you guys missed your opportunity you could have stood out right, right, you could have right. worn something really loud so I guess what does it say about K-pop fans because they make you rich they make you famous they follow your every move online they analyze it almost like uh, you know how basketball fans in Taiwan were analyzing Jeremy Lin's every move but then I guess I could see how that could be bad in a way too uh, well you could look at it one way that they kind of stood out by the fact that their dresses were so simple or who knows some people were kind of like uh, you know, uh, uh, Jenny and uh, Song, you know, maybe you go more humbly and then we don't try to do too much and just present yourself as like humble women from Korea. Yeah, Possibly, who knows? Right? I mean, honestly, I thought it was cool the way they were taking photos there because it was more like squad. Right. You know, I think that's tight. You're not even supposed to have your phone out there or something. I don't point. know. There's so like some bunch of rules with the Met Gala guys. You know, I you didn't know, uh, you regular plebs yeah. might not know how the high society of Bruce Wayne and all the philanthropists go. Moving on to number nine, Andrew Ashley Park. She's been in Emily in Paris. Joyride. She went with the fishnet dress from Michael Kors. Um... I've been seeing Ashley Park pop up a little bit. She's actually from Michigan, just like Steven Yuen. She was also in Beef. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, a lot of uh, Koreans from Michigan getting on right now. And my b cultural hot take is that sometimes you need to be from a very Americana, Midwest, American, Middle America type place. I'm sure they're from good families there. But, you know, it's around them. You know, people eating chili bowls and all that stuff. To, like, navigate media. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it definitely helps to be... Very American at your heart, but also Asian. And I think like that you have to have like a country. I think that's yeah. what Steven Yun and Ashley Park are. I know that they're proud of being Asian. They can play those characters. Obviously, we know Steven can from Minari, but I'm saying like, it's cool that they're from a very American place. Like we're talking about the Midwest. Yeah, I mean, it's like an Asian rapper would probably have to be from the inner city to pass to get by in the rap world. It to, makes get sense, big, right? to get respect in the... Yes, probably. Something like that. It's it's basically along those lines. All right, David, number 10. We got Mindy Calling. Mindy Calling has been a star for like two decades I mean, now. She was in what, The Office? The Office, and then she had her own show, and then she's doing this, and then she has another show. And didn't she like write on The Office too, or she wrote 30 Rock, right? So I forgot. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I man. mean, she's My respected in the comedy writer world, and she's a hilarious actress. Obviously, like... I guess her new Netflix show Velma's a little bit more controversial though. Yeah, I heard yeah, that one yeah, got up pretty and down, bad up and down. I, I actually but David, watched, our, I watched some of it. I did not David, think it was as bad as the critics said. This is I our first uh, South Asian on the list. Yeah, she's wearing a Iranian designer called Jonathan Simkai. I mean, I think my big takeaway was that um, you know, I think her writing's always been super smart. It's always interesting talking to my Daisy comedian friends about what they think about Mindy Kaling. And, but I, I would say generally they, 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 they're way less like uh, critical of her than like internet commenters. No, but I think at a time, a lot of people were viewing her somewhat as like a sellout brown girl because she would always like make her love interest a white guy, right? Love interest. And I'm sure she, in real life, she probably does date a lot of white guys, you know, but she's in the industry. Like that's a lot. I mean, it is what it anybody, is. even the guys in the industry probably date white people, to be honest. Yeah. 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 I mean, a lot of people just do because it's just. American entertainment, and it's just like right, right, right. To get to the Met Gala, don't you have to rise some ladder of the Anglosphere, whether it was in arts and fashion? But it's not arts and fashion in Asia, yeah, unless you're it's from, arts and fashion of the Western world. Yeah, and I, I've been overall a fan of Mindy Kelly. I think she's funny. So shout out to her. Um, but controversial too. Yeah, I mean, some people she like, looks dude, good every, every, after all these years. Yeah. I'm gonna say she looks good after, dude. Any every community is hypercritical of like the first person from their world oh. to like enter echelons of a, a new industry. You I know? mean, well, I mean, if geez, if the fans want to get mad about a brown girl dating a white guy, here the next one we got Priyanka Chopra Jones. Oh, Jonas, Chopra I'm Jones, sorry, right. Jonas, or Jonas, whatever. yes. Um, she she's... is a Indian actress and pop star who is married to Nick Jonas. She wore a Valentino dress inspired by Karl Lagerfeld. I would say that the back part was pretty cool. It looked almost fantastical to me, like I had never seen 
this like big thing that she was holding in her hand. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Priyanka, she does a lot. Um, obviously, probably controversial in India, probably for like patriarchal dudes. Oh, I yeah, mean, I, sure. I think she's controversial on the internet for internet guys. Yeah, for sure, yeah, for yeah. sure. Not like IRL necessary, but for sure. But, the internet. No, I mean, let's be honest. She is. She was at one point considered like the most beautiful celebrity in India. Right. So she then, was the next one after Ashwarya Rai kind of age. So out, for right? her to marry. A white dude who's Nick Jonas is cool. I think no one really has a problem with him. He's like a chill white dude. Dude, he's not white, bro. He's oh, Italian. Oh, he's he Ital- might be part Sicilian, bad. Might be part Sicilian, no, it's true. bro. True, um, he's a little dark haired. I would say that she fights for a lot of women's rights in areas of the world that might be more old school, which is pretty dope. And uh, she married a Jonas brother, and I think it actually is a really interesting story. Actually, nah. I, I to be honest, I didn't know much about it until I just researched it for this video. It's very interesting. It's multi-layered. Yeah, no, I think they have a great marriage. It looks cool. Good for them. Moving it's on awesome. to number 12, Andrew, we got Vera Wang, a famous yeah. Chinese-American designer wearing Vera Wang. Vera Wang has been around for so long, man. She has been, she's still designing. She's, she's been still, famous in the fashion world for like, I don't even know how many decades. Dude, shout out to the Taiwanese. Uh, Andrew Jay-Z had a line, do I too, you look like a lame who don't understand a broad with a mean shoe game who's up on dot, 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 Vera Wang. He probably has met Vera Wang multiple times, to be honest. You know what's interesting about Jay-Z, Andrew? Jay-Z is from the streets, where a lot of people, I'm sure they probably don't know what the Met Gala is either, but he actually is a perenni- like perennial person at the Met Gala now. Oh, yeah. I'm sure so he's he like probably one of the only guys who made that transition. Um, Number 13, Andrew, we got Olivia Rodrigo. She is a huge pop star, obviously was an actress when she was younger. She is half Filipino. She's wearing Tom Brown in a stringy, eye-catching String dress. Mm, Olivia Rodrigo. Uh, I will, what do you think, David? Do you think that, obviously, I think overall Filipinos are pretty happy for her, pretty proud of her. Sh- does she need to do any more Filipino things? Or do or you think, like, as far as her proving, th- I mean, she's Filipino. She doesn't have to really prove it. Yeah, I mean, I saw the photos with her and her grandparents. I mean, I would say she's definitely Latina passing. I'm not saying that she ever leaned into it or, like, faked it or anything like that. But, but I would also say a good amount of Filipinos are I, also Latino passing. Yeah, period. yeah. I would like to see her do more Filipino stuff in the future. But if she doesn't, man, I don't think anybody's going to really say anything. All right, how about this, guys? It's I know different a, than Eileen Gu, who won a gold medal for China. Because I know a lot of people are like, oh, maybe Olivia, she needs to, like, I need to see her make lumpiers. No, I she feel needs like to do not, a song with Apple to App from, uh, and, you know, the Black Eyed Peas and stuff. I feel like there's a more relevant Filipino artist right now. Um, Moving on, Christine Chu, Andrew. She is a rich woman from Bling Empire because Ooh. everybody on the show is rich. Rich woman um, from Bling. She had the wild Madonna vintage Chanel dress on. One thing I thought was cool about it is... Who was going to think you're going to bust out a dress from the old days, from like mm. uh, 30 years ago? Um, you know, shout out to Christine Chu. I think she is, I guess I'm surprised that she's here at the Met Gala. I wouldn't expect like a reality show star from Bling Empire. But, but she's, she's really rich and a philanthropist. Hey. That's, Andrew, in fact, that might even be holding more true to the old ideals of the Met Gala before all the celebrities polluted it. Well, shout out to her, man. You know, and here's the thing, guys. Uh, you do need rich Asians to to care about Asian things. And do you need the rich Asians that were already rich? Because actually, low-key guys, I, I don't know if you guys know this. I'm sure you guys do. There are a ton of rich Asians in the world, but actually in terms of rich, famous ones like uh, Christine Chu, not a lot. Yeah. Uh, you, do you need these people to be high profile? You don't need them to be high profile, but you do need them to care about Asians on some level. Right. Moving on, number 15, we got Wendy Deng and Grace Murdoch, who is her daughter that she had with Rupert Murdoch. Mm. And uh, interestingly enough, Andrew, Wendy Deng from Jinan Shandong, wow. same place as Huang Wenji, Yellow Braised Your Chicken favorite Pot dish. Rice. I bet Wendy Deng might know how to cook some Huang Wenji. Wow. That's crazy to think wow. about. It. Now, mean, Wendy Deng herself, a little controversial on some levels, but we don't have to go into her story. If you guys are interested, you just Google her. Let me just like say that. this. I think she might read power levels, Andrew, more better than Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z. Let me just tell you this, that when someone is able to do a biopic of her, it will be pretty interesting. Yeah, you guys got to look into it. Uh, moving on, number 16, we've got Sora Choi, who is a very famous uh, model in New York City from South Korea and probably had the craziest Tom Brown dress out of everybody. It looked wow. fantastical. Oh, Sora is already a cool name, yeah. I mean, I had no idea who she was, but I think she had the best dress there, honestly. I've never uh, seen a dress that looked like this. next dress from this next person, this next celeb, was designed 
by someone that we know. Yeah, we met. we're talking about Aaliyah Bhatt, who is a British Indian actress and had a pearl dress made by Prabhu Gurung, who we know. Shout out to Prabhu. Prabhu Gurung, we see him around New York all the time. He's Nepalese. Um, he's a cool dude and uh, very supportive of the Asian movement, of of Asian empowerment. I, I thought her dress stood out just because she didn't do the Karl Lagerfeld thing. I was kind of getting sick of seeing people with the leather gloves because mm -hmm. I was like, man... Shout out to Carl Lagerfeld, but man, there was a lot of, too much influence. I don't know. I mean, I just, it's just nice to see a switch up. Right. And last but not least, Andrew, we've got Tai Shu Kun, which is one of the top male models in China. He's wearing Prada. That's who he's signed with. And uh, it still kind of looked, had some ancient dynastic drapiness uh, to it. But David, David, he's actually not even a model. Oh, he's not a model? He's a singer and rapper. Oh my gosh. He's one of the hottest, like... I wouldn't say he's like, he's, he's not probably a rapper. like a Jay Chow or like no, a Chris Wu no, type listen, of rapper. He's not a rapper like Higher Brothers, but he is, he does rap. I, I think I've heard him rap. He's actually kind of good at it. Yeah, he's not yeah, bad. Yeah, he's got yeah, some yeah, tracks. Yeah, yeah. Dude, he's big in China. He's huge in China, actually. So, this is what they love in China, you know? Shout yeah, out to them. I mean, he's, he's, he's beautiful, man. <laughs> <laughs> David, do you think, all right, to wrap this all up. That was actually 18 Asians. Is there a 19th one? Uh, I think they doubled up because of the Grace Murdoch and stuff. Anyway, so should the Asians even care that Asians are showing up at the Met Gala or this is more for the industry to care? All right. It's definitely more for the industry. If you're in the industry or you're industry adjacent like us, I guess you, 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 you already knew a lot of these people off the top of your head. But I don't think your average Asian American should care. But what they should know is is that there's more Asians, I guess, entering um, high society in fields or, or like rising the ladder in fields that previously had not a lot of Asians at high levels. Mm, do you right? think you think it is? Do you think that once you get invited to the Met Gala, you are actually part of high society or or you not real? I mean, it's not like you're part of the Illuminati. No, I don't think so. But I think there are people who, for sure, if there is an Illuminati, know them that are at the Met Gala. Do you think it's good? The more Asians are getting up to this tier because the more Asians that get validated by the powerful systems, that means there's more Asians with some leverage or say, and as long as that they are like good people and pro-Asian and care about the goodness of the world, then overall, that makes it I mean, better. ultimately it's good, but in terms of like how much good it does, it really depends on what they do with their power and their influence but, and their platform, right? Say, if they bring it back to the Asian American community, what tiers, what income levels are they impacting? What issues do they value and prioritize? Because everybody only got 24 hours in a day and I, so much I, brain power. I would say this, the narrative, the narrative and the image is that Asian celebrities are generally like nicer, better people than a lot of the other celebrities. I yeah. feel like that's the general, like Simu is seen as a very good boy, good man, in Hollywood. Not, right, right, he's not going to do not a weird. He's, he's not doing the, a lot of drugs. He's right. not going to get into scandal, all this other stuff. It's like clean people. So I guess there's more clean Asians, whether or not they're rich or super talented or good looking, whatever, it doesn't matter. A lot of Asians have been told to be a doctor at some point. I don't yeah. know if Johnny Depp, Charlie Sheen, and Robert Downey Jr. had ever attempted to be a doctor. Basically, I'm just saying maybe there should be more Asians in politics and at the Met Gala because yeah, Asians I mean, to be honest, are listen, nice guys, people. Long story short, the reason why it's impactful to people who don't care and, and really don't care is because uh, Asians have to be strong in particular fields that they were always traditionally weak in. Yeah. So anyway, long story short, let us know what you think of the Asians at the Met Gala. Let us know what you thought of our analysis, what you thought of their outfits. Let us know in the comment section below. Hot Pop Boys, we breaking everything down. Silly to serious, guys. There's no limits. Till next time, we out. Peace. Peace.